Hello, everybody. My name is Daryl Prale. You may know that already. I am here. It is Tuesday. And this, my friend, is another edition of 15.5. I've got my coffee. That means I got caffeine. You're probably thinking to yourself right now, Daryl, you don't need no bloody caffeine. And you, my friend, would be right. I don't. The reason I'm so hyped, so excited, so totally gobsmacked is because I have an amazing guest today. All right, let me set the stage. We've all heard of GTM, right? Go to market. It's all the rage. Everybody's talking about it. We've got people like Pavilion and Rev Genius and everybody else having dedicated communities for it. But who, who is the driving force behind GTM? Well, you have to know if you don't by now. It is the crew at GTM Partners. All right, that was founded by Brian Brown and San Gramvaggi. They, they wrote the book called Move. If you've not read it, go to Amazon, download it. You're gonna love it, it's fantastic. It's a complete framework. But better yet, go to gtmpartners.com because there they've got incredible research. They've got great, it's like a primer on everything you need to know. Like what are the common problems? Just 15 by the way. What are the common motions? I think there's seven, maybe there's six. Who knows, go check it out, all right? That you need to address those problems. And then it's crazy, it's just nuts. So. If they're the OG, by the way, on my LinkedIn post, I, I asked everybody, we all know OG means original. But what does G stand for? If you don't know, by the way, I, I, so I said, if you had the answer, and I said this on my LinkedIn comment this morning, pushing you there to this event, the answer is gangsta. They're the original gangsta when it comes to, to, to all things GTM. So I thought to myself on our specific issue of 15.5 around tech, trends, tactics these are the people that i want to ask the actual people behind the movement so what have i done well if you don't know by now let me tell you i brought sarah allen short vp of marketing gtm partners to the table to you and we're going to do all of this today i'm going to hit her up after those questions we we'll get this all done in a maximum of 20 minutes five minutes max for each of the three topics that's the 15 and then five minutes for Q&A. That's the five, 15, five. We get it done sooner, great. Okay, Sarah, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much. You're hired to be our, our GTM Partners hype man. Ooh, well, you know, this is cup of coffee number two and both, both have caffeine, so there we go. So, all right, so tell me a little bit about you. You've got a wonderful journey, but by the way, you've only got about 10 seconds, go. I've been a VP of marketing at startup tech companies for 20 years. And I decided to join GTM Partners because I loved what they were doing and I wanted to use it at my last company. And I thought I should just join A. And B, I think it's the most challenging role to be doing marketing with an audience of go-to-marketers because I have to be on my toes all the time. So I'm wow. having a great time. There she goes. Okay, so folks, did you catch all that? That is Sarah Allen Short, VP of Marketing. Uh, I, I posted her LinkedIn profile there. Now, if you're watching this on LinkedIn and we're streaming to all the major platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you name it. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, you can simply go follow her. But if you're not, go follow her. That's the first step. Okay, so I have wasted already three and a half minutes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually bring up our wonderful deck. There it is. This sets the stage. Here we go. Sarah. As yes. it relates, are you ready? As it relates to tech, we asked you, what is one tech that you yourself or you as part of GTM Partners are all about? And this, my friend, is the answer you gave us right here. Boom. You said AI as an enhancement, not a replacement. So talk to me. What do you mean about this trend? Yeah, so I think that obviously AI is everywhere. We've done an AI summit. Everybody's talking about AI. I think that there's a lot of fears that a lot of us in marketing, especially in content marketing, are going to be replaced by AI. I, you know, I heard somebody say, and I can't remember who it is, that we're going to be replaced not by AI, but by people who know how to use AI. Um, and so when I think about my job and my role, I'm loving when vendors bring me AI that is integrated into their products to make it work more efficiently and more effectively. I love that. When I'm looking for sort of pure AI tools to make my job easier, 
I, you know, one of the things Sangram, the CEO is like, AI, whatever AI tools you want, make your job easier, make your job more efficient, do it. If I have to spend three months learning how to use it, it's not going to be as efficient for me. And so I think what I'm looking for is vendors that are incorporating AI in usable ways. And I'm looking for tools that I, I think this will continue to evolve over time. But tools where the AI is easy. I mean, ChatGPT is super easy to use, right? So ChatGPT is a great example. But I think it's all about, you know, I think prompt engineering. You still have to have somebody who knows what's going on running the AI. If I can write all my blog posts using ChatGPT, they are not good blog posts, period. All right. So I love this. And by the way, if you're, if you're, if you're wondering, folks, I a thousand percent agree with what Sarah is saying here, but there are others who will have a very different point of view. So from my point of view, I've gone to my team, every single one of them, and I've said, I want you to evaluate all of the AI that's out there and come back to me and give me your assessment. So what tools yeah. did you look at? What are your assessment of them? Because I was just curious. But B, tell me if one or more of these will help you and how. Yep. That's the first thing I've said to them. And if you haven't done that by now, you're way behind the times. Please go do that if you're a marketing leader. Um, if you're a marketing uh, generalist, marketing specialist, whatever you want to call yourself, a marketing, you know, uh, what do you want? I just say it's just an incredible marketer. You've probably already done this because you're looking for shortcuts to make your life better. Yeah. So, but if but there is also you, and these are the this is the I I I'm a little, I can't talk today, Sarah. This is okay. I think. The quiet majority, I think most marketers don't know bupkis around AI and are scared to go look or don't have time to go yeah. look. So when you say it's a trend and not a replacement, should I exhale, Sarah? Should I say, okay, I'm feeling a little better about this? Or do I, should I say, okay, I'm exhaling, but I still only have a small window to become a prompt engineer. And by the way, for those who don't know, can you explain what a prompt engineer is? Well, for chat GPT, as an example, if you say, write me a blog post about the different ways to go to market, you're going to get a very dry, very generic piece. If you say, write me a blog post with six ways to go to market that include these and do it in the style of Daryl Prale, then you start to get some interesting stuff out of it. Um, yeah, I think you can exhale to some degree. I still think we all have to learn AI. I mean, we all have to learn about how, as I said, I think our jobs are going to be not replaced by AI, but by people who understand AI. So we need to understand AI. But I mean, I was talking to a colleague the other day who's found this incredible tool that can do this amazing uh, data enrichment for, for various things. And I said, can you teach it to me? And she's like, well, I've been using it for three months and I still don't really have it. And at that point, when you start to talk about bigger companies, it's like, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just hire a vendor to do that for me, um, for that, that specific data enrichment tool. Um, so I think, but I think AI is still very new. And I think that a lot of the companies are not focused on training, onboarding UX, just they're focused on the exciting tech. And so as we've seen with a lot of other technologies, they'll get there and they'll make it easier for us to use. And I absolutely think it can save time, but it, we still need to have the human asking the right questions. If you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to get the right answers. Okay. We asked Sarah, my good friend, Sarah, to actually give us a piece of tech. Yes. When I said, Sarah, what's the piece of tech? Sarah told me that the piece of tech was actually content experience platforms and digital sales rooms. That's a mouthful, Sarah. Talk to me. What does that mean? Yeah. So I, I, you know, because we're an analyst firm, I don't want to endorse one company over another. But what I will say is we use, I'm, I'm using content experience platforms for the first time in my life. Every other job I've ever had, what I thought a content experience platform was, was basically a glorified a catalog, you know, just a way to sort, sort content and make sure people saw it. And I, I, I mean, organize it basically. And what I'm learning from using a content experience platform is that there's AI built in that suggests if, if someone reads this one thing, it knows you're gonna be interested in these other things. Some of the platforms have really robust lead generation capabilities with and without gating, or maybe just with an email and they enrich from there. Um, 
there are, you can use content experience platforms. I always kind of thought of it as like an inbound outbound thing where, you know, basically every ebook you've ever done, like the old fashioned way, the five or 10 years ago way would be every ebook you've ever done is out there and people read it and they had it's gated and they have to click through. And I think the new way is thinking about how to use content experience platforms with event led growth. How do you create uh, an, an environment where someone before or after an event can read content or ex uh, explore content related to the event? There's even AI, you know, on some of these platforms that you can ask, you can go into a 40 page PDF and ask a question and the AI will find the answer in the report. Um, I find it really, really an amazing extension for, for, my background is always in companies that are pretty content heavy. I'm a big believer in content strategy for a B2B technology company. Um, and so I've always been focused on content, but I'm just really excited at the way that it's working. And a digital sales room, I would say, is a little bit different. Most of the content experience platforms have digital sales room capabilities. Um, you can also go to more of a point solution for a digital sales room. But a digital sales room is basically a place where you can host, you know, we're selling an enterprise account. We can upload everything that that enterprise account needs into one place, including, you know, videos from our CEO, videos from the AE, all of the white papers or content they might need, contracts, everything like that. And then um, <clears throat> you can track who goes, how often they go, what engagement is like. They can share it around internally. Um, it's just such a nice evolution from, you know, an email trail where you're like, and, and also this, and also this, and also this. And so what I can do now from a sales perspective is if I'm selling someone, I can add something to that digital sales room and then send them an email that says, hey, I added this to your, you know, your portal, um, go check it out. And then I see if they're clicking, I see if they're engaging and I see if they're looking at that other content again. Oh, here's your contract just hanging out right there for you, just in case you want to take a peek at that again. Um, and so I'm really excited by the cap the, the um, ability of a digital sales room to bring a complex set of sellers and a complex set of buyers into one digital environment to do asynchronous sales. All right. and, and we use our content experience platform for that, but there are also point solutions for that. So without naming, understanding you can't name all the vendors in the space, is there one or two vendors you can point us to so we yeah. can do a little more due diligence? Yeah, I would say in the content experience, experience platform space, space, I would look at Hushly, Uberflip, and Path Factory. Boom, there you go. Okay. And they all offer DSRs and they all offer content experience. They all have a little bit different, you know, different vibe. Um, those are three great ones. All right, we've got three minutes left. No okay. pressure, my friend, no pressure at all. Okay. But if I had to say to you, Sarah, what is the one tactic you would say you're all over? And of course, I have done that. And you've already given me the answer. You said, Daryl, it was yes. event-led growth. Okay, in three minutes, why is okay. it event-led growth? So I would say this is more of a strategy than a tactic, but strategy doesn't start with T and I know what you're doing here. So I have always thought of events as hugely time intensive, hugely expensive um, uh, efforts. And what I'm learning from GTM partners, we're using an event-led growth strategy where we're doing these road shows and we're using um, offshore talent to invite people one-on-one -on -one to the road shows. And we are having amazing results. We're doing a combination of these roadshows around cities uh, around North America. And then we're also doing virtual events, um, which we are having seven, 800, 1,000, sometimes 1,500 people sign up for our virtual events. And I am coming from a company where we had trouble getting 100 people to sign up for a webinar. And so I am really excited that when you look at event-led growth as an integrated strategy that involves your customer success team, your product team, your sales team, your marketing team, instead of the way that I've always seen it done in the past, which is like marketing is just hustling and trying to get everybody else to pay attention. Um, it, it is paying amazing di dividends. So can we agree this the secret sauce behind your event-led growth beyond everything you've just said is having amazing speakers like me there talking about product-led growth? I mean, is that it not is like the secret? Absolutely the secret sauce. And I have to tell the audience that last week, Daryl was on a thing uh, for us and we had to like chase him down and get his his slides and his presentation. And then this week I'm here for him and his team had to chase me down and get my, <laughs> so we're, we're even now. And I think I win yeah, though, because you got it the afternoon before and I got it the night before. So yeah. I was more last minute but than you. In fairness, I freaked your team out more. 
you stuck me in between Sangram Vajray and John Miller. So like two industry behemoths. So I had no pressure on me. You notice I didn't do that. You did you. great. You did right? great. You did yeah. great. Yeah, I, I appreciate that very, very much. Okay. With that said, if anybody has any questions at all, now's your chance to bring it up. We would love to hear what you have to say. We got, oh my God, we got this comment here from Teresa where she says, event and the growth is such a hot topic for GTM teams. Why do you think it's a hot topic for GTM teams, Sarah? I think it's a hot topic because we're in this world of transition. I mean, we were all doing a ton of events and then there was COVID and we had to recalibrate and we had to figure out online events and we figured that out. And then there was burnout for online events and I, and people stopped coming. And I, I think a couple of of maybe like a year ago, I just started hearing anecdotally from people that, you know, the, the show rates were lower for virtual events. People wanted to get back out to in-person events, but we kind of lost the muscle memory for doing it. So I think event-led growth gives you the opportunity. First of all, event-led growth meets every phase, you know, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Like you can, you can calibrate it for every bit of it. And so it's, a, it's such an incredibly useful strategy but I think we're kind of always reinventing how it's done because, you know, two years ago, you could throw up a Zoom webinar and everybody was so happy to talk to people. We were getting great show rates and now nobody wants to go to Zoom webinars anymore. So you have to use these platforms, you know, more in, um, integrated platforms um, to get to get better engagement. So I think we're all trying to figure it out. All right. And the thing about going so fast in this format is people sometimes miss what we say. And I love it. The, uh, Dina, did I say it right? Wants to know what were the two content experience platforms you mentioned? I actually, you mentioned three, if I, I recall. I mentioned you three. Mentioned, Hushly, yeah. Path Factory, and Uberflip. Hushly, Path Factory, and Uberflow. So there you go. That's fantastic. I'm very familiar with, uh, with some of them. I won't say all of them, and I won't say which ones, but they have fantastic rep uh, reputations. Yeah, um, and really great capabilities. So here we go. The, uh, so Teresa wants to know off topic, are there any tools that, uh, that they, meaning you, GM partners, the GTM partners are using for events that Sarah can share? Uh, in other words, how do you go about making those events, shall we say, extra fun events? Yeah, I think we are big fans of, <laughs> for a virtual event, for, for an in-person event, our events tend to be mostly education focused. And my experience is that if you offer enough education at an event, you sort of earn the right to do a little bit of a sales pitch. And that's, you know, for, for an in-person event, I think that could be great. For a virtual event, we're using these virtual event apps that have the ability to have, you know, breakout rooms, tables. Honestly, to be very frank with you, we haven't had good luck with people attending those. People don't do the breakout rooms and the tables. But what people do do is they ask a lot of questions. We are, um, they use emoji reactions. They're interacting with, the, each, with each other, things like that. And then I will tell you one big tip for teams is have your team attending so that you can interact in the chat while your leader is talking. So for example, if I had a huge marketing team, which I don't, and we were doing a virtual webinar together and you were interviewing me, I would have my team watching and participating in the background to answer any questions that came up, send people to our resources, all of that sort of thing. Um, so I think we're 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 unique a little bit. Because we are an analyst firm, and we're doing so much education. But I, honestly, I think that's why people go to events. Is they go to events for education. They don't go for sales pitches. So yeah, I, I think focus on focus on that and focus people at our in person events. They are really really wanting the face-to-face -face time, the gab time, you know, we've added an additional happy hour the night before, but in the virtual events for us, we haven't cracked that code yet um, to make that feel really natural, even, the, even with virtual breakout rooms and things. So we're really focused on delivering really great value in the content. So when you talk about having your teams back there, I've showed Teresa more than once here. Teresa's on my team. So there yes. you go. She's making go. things happen. By the way, I don't know if you saw this, Sarah, but uh, we, we are being blessed right now by the one, the only Rhonda Geet. Rhonda, for those of you who don't know, is hey, an Rhonda. incredible uh, CMO. 
She yes. is a fraction OCMO. Check her out on LinkedIn, follow her. And she spoke recently, was it, I think it was in the Boston GTM event you guys had recently. Yep. So she's incredible. She was talking about her tech stack on GTM motions. It was amazing. So that's Ron. I'm glad to have you here, my friend. Um, okay, so with that all said, uh, we did have this slide up, and I want to bring it back up here momentarily, which is we have this incredible Slack channel where these conversations continue. So please go there and join that if you didn't see it. Finally, I will mention, and I would be remiss if I didn't, that you can actually see Agora Pulse, which is another cool technology highlighted by so many speakers on the GTM speaking tour as a key component in their GTM strategy. If you want to learn why, check it out at the uh, at the, the link you see there on the screen. But with that, my friend, we are out of time. So, Sarah, thank you so much for being thank there. Thank you so much. Thank You're you the so best. Much. Folks, if you didn't see it, I will I will just I will remind you that, that my good friend here, Sarah, can be followed on LinkedIn. Right I can, here. and I will throw in quickly at gtmpartners.com. All of our research is free. We're really trying to be a different kind of analyst firm. You don't have to pay us for every seat. We're not going to hunt you down if your IP address doesn't match the IP address of the seat you bought. All of our research is free. gtmpartners.com. Check it out gtmpartners.com. Check it out. Sarah Allen Short. My name is Daryl Prale. She's with GTM Partners, the next kick-ass analyst firm. If you're a marketer and you miss serious decisions, if you're in sales and you miss Topo and you're going, who's that firm? It's GTM Partners, gtmpartners.com. In the meantime, join our Slack group. Check out Agora Pulse in action. And we're going to do this again next week. 15.5. Let me know what you think. My name is Daryl. Have a great day, folks. We'll talk to you soon.